We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beach and the fire, unlike on the landing ground. We shall fight on the field and in the sky. This country is at war with Germany. At 7.50 a.m. on the morning of August the 9th, 1945, air raid sirens began to ring out in the Japanese city of Nagasaki. However, a short while later, the sirens rang out again, indicating that there was no danger and people began to climb out of their shelters to carry on about their daily business. Japanese spotters had only sighted two US AAF B-29 bombers, not enough for an air raid on a major city and presumed they were merely on a reconnaissance mission. At 1101 hours, a single bomb was dropped into the city's industrial area. The bomb detonated with the equivalent force of 22,000 sticks of TNT, which resulted in a blast so bright that it was seen by observers over 100 miles away. The fireball generated temperatures in excess of 3,900 degrees centigrade and generated winds of up to 600 miles per hour that added to the destruction. Exact figures are unclear, but at least 129,000 people were either killed on the day, or would die in the weeks and even years that followed. Six days after this attack, Japan surrendered to the Allies, bringing to a close the most destructive conflict ever recorded that ended with the first two, and so far only, nuclear attacks in history. It was the Second World War. It's impossible to dissect the causes of the Second World War without discussing the rise of the Nazi party in Germany and its leader, Adolf Hitler. Hitler was himself of Austrian birth, but he fought in the German army during the First World War. When the war ended with Germany's humiliation, Hitler felt especially bitter about it and like many in Europe, he feared communism spreading beyond the borders of post-revolutionary Russia. In 1919, a year after the end of the war, he joined a new and little-known political group called the German Workers' Party and used his great ability as a speaker to stir up crowds and gain support. A year later, the party was renamed the National Socialist German Workers' Party, more commonly known by its English abbreviation Nazi. In 1921, Hitler rose to become leader of the party, and again using his magnetic personality, he continued to garner more and more support, until 1923, the Nazis were confident enough to attempt a coup in Munich and seize power. Known as the Beer Hall Putsch, the effort failed and Hitler was arrested before being put on trial, but this only furthered the Nazi cause. Hitler used the trial to gain even more supporters, and despite him spending a year in prison, in which he wrote his autobiography, Mein Kampf, the Nazis continued to establish themselves in German politics. Mein Kampf not only outlined his own story, but it also set about establishing his vision for the future of the German people, and how he believed subversive groups were holding them back from achieving their destiny through measures such as the Treaty of Versailles which outlined Germany's surrender terms. He specifically identified Jews and communists as being the leaders of this great international conspiracy to keep the German people down after the war, highlighting the harsh conditions imposed on the country by the victorious allies, such as the dissolution of Germany's empire and armed forces, the loss of territory to newly created countries in the east and France in the west, and having to pay crippling war reparations. The book effectively became the Nazi Bible. By 1933, the Nazi party had secured enough political support that Hitler legally became Chancellor of Germany. He quickly began passing legislation that would transform Germany into Nazi Germany, 
and the swastika would symbolize this reinvigorated country. The prosecution of Jews, gypsies, and political opponents soon became government policy, as Hitler began preparing Nazi Germany to attain what he saw as its destiny cantered around the concept of the Aryan race, with himself as the undisputed leader, the Führer. History records that the Second World War began in 1939. However, some historians now argue that it began in 1931 with the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in China. The Japanese deliberately detonated a bomb on a Chinese railway line used by Japanese citizens in order to blame it on Chinese dissidents. This was then used as a pretext to invade the country and Japan would occupy the land there until liberated by the Allies in 1945. Japanese occupation of Chinese territory was extraordinarily harsh. Rape and murder were widespread and often encouraged by the Japanese leadership. While at Pingfang in northeast China, a military research unit was set up with a special mission. Designated Unit 731, thousands of Chinese civilians were used in nightmarish medical experiments to develop biological and chemical weapons, as well as carry out experimental surgeries, often without anesthesia, for fear of corrupting the data. In 1922, Benito Mussolini and his National Fascist Party rose to power in Italy. Very soon, he began reshaping the democratic political landscape of the country into a dictatorship cantered around himself. Mussolini, like Hitler in Germany, believed his country had a destiny and wanted to build a new Roman Empire, beginning with a massive build-up of his armed forces. He was not afraid to use them and proved this when he sent his forces into Abyssinia, modern-day Ethiopia, in 1935 to start the construction of his new empire in Africa. If Manchuria can be considered the first battlefront of World War II, then Abyssinia was the second. As the 1930s grew on, Hitler's Nazi party became firmly embedded not just in German politics, but into German society on a whole. The German people had much to thank the Nazi party for, since they had pulled the country out of the despair of defeat and reinvigorated it, promising that Germany would soon be attaining its destiny of becoming a great power again. Hitler's appeal and influence was not lost on foreign observers, many of whom admired him and even began to sympathize with the Treaty of Germany after the war. Proof of this was given when Hitler became Time Magazine's Man of the Year. This played perfectly into Hitler's hands as he began making notions of regaining lost territory in the east and west of the country. The first test of how the Allied powers of Britain and France would respond to his new Germany came in 1935 when Hitler introduced military conscription, which saw the German armed forces swell many times beyond the number permitted by the Treaty of Versailles. But the Allies did nothing. Encouraged by this, he then ordered his troops into the Rhineland in 1936. The Rhineland had been demilitarized in 1925 in order to create a safety zone for France, who along with Belgium had occupied it for a time due to Germany's inability to pay war reparations. Hitler had given secret orders to his men that should they encounter French military resistance, they were to retreat because Germany was still in no condition to fight a war. Despite protests by France at the Legion of Nations, the precursor to modern day UN, again they did nothing. In 1937, British Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin stood down and was succeeded by Neville Chamberlain. Meanwhile, Germany continued to rearm and now set their sights on reclaiming the German Sudetenland, which had been absorbed into Czechoslovakia after the war. At the same time, Hitler looked to his own birth country of Austria to become a part of his new Germany, although this was again forbidden by the Versailles Treaty. Austria and Germany had long had an almost symbiotic relationship, and both countries' people viewed the other as cousins. Austria even had its own Nazi party, and in January 1938, they attempted their own putsch, much like Hitler had tried in 1923. The putsch failed, and many leading Austrian Nazis were imprisoned. 
Hitler's propaganda machine went to work creating a false impression that Austrians were rising up in support of their imprisoned Nazis. 